it's Monday again. Woohoo! Another week. How are we going to spend this week, I wonder? So, obviously, I'm going to do a cooking video today. Excuse the state of my hair. I have washed it, but it's gone rather frizzy. Uh, so, this is what it's going to look like. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so today I thought I'd do a recipe that doesn't have flour in it because I don't know about you but I'm finding it very tricky to buy flour anywhere. So I thought I'd do a flapjack recipe um, which doesn't use flour, it just uses oats. So I've got the recipe, I've weighed out the ingredients as we're used to. Um, as always, I've put the oven on already. It says it needs to be on uh, about 200 degrees. I'm only putting it on at 180, so gas mark four, our usual, because sometimes flapjacks can be a little bit tricky to cook. So I haven't put it on too high, um, but it is on and it's ready to go. I have managed from Avon, can you believe it? I've managed to get myself some antibacterial uh, gel. So I have washed my hands. But as always, I'm going to put a little bit of that on just to be on the safe side. And as always, please make sure you've spoken to your grown up and they are here to help you when you do your cooking. Um, and hopefully these are little bits and pieces of ingredients that you might find around the house. Now, in a flapjack, you can always add uh, extra bits and pieces. So most people will enjoy adding chocolate chips. Unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of any of those either. Some people add raisins or they might add some dried fruit. That's fine. You can add a little bit of that. Um, as much as you want, but not too much, obviously, uh, because otherwise it'll absorb some of the liquid in the ingredients. I've chosen today to add yogurt cranberries. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to go, but I'm going to give it a try because I quite like cranberries. Yogurt will make them a little bit more moist when they cook. So let's turn this down and let's get started. So as you can see, I've got all my ingredients laid out as normal. Um, what I have weighed out already is 120 grams of porridge oats. Um, and they are in the bowl already. Ta -da! I have weighed out 60 grams of light brown sugar. Now I couldn't get light brown sugar, so I had some demerara sugar in the cupboard, so I'm just using that. Even if you've got normal sugar, it'll work. It'll just taste a little sweeter. Light brown sugar makes it taste a little bit more syrupy. So I have weighed out 60 grams of sugar and I have weighed out 60 grams of butter. Now it needs softened butter. So I just zapped mine in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Ask a grown up if you need to do that first. Um, it was, uh, it's melted a little bit, but that's fine. And then the last thing you're going to need. Now, if you've got a cup measurement like I have at home, the end of the cup measurement normally has teaspoons and tablespoons on it. So this is my biggest cup measurement and it's got a tablespoon measure on the end and I'm going to need one to two tablespoons of syrup. Quite like the syrup, so I'm gonna use two tablespoons. A little hint is that when you're spooning out syrup, if you put the spoon in some very hot water first and then spoon the syrup out, so I've got a squeezy golden syrup, but you could always use um, the ones that come in the jar, if you put it in hot water first and then spoon it out, it slides off the spoon much more easily. Even though I've said that today, I don't actually have any hot water to put mine in. So what we're going to do, the first thing is to mix the ingredients. So like I said, I've melted the butter already. So that is going to go into the oats. Da, 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 da. I want to make sure I've got it all off the sides of the bowls because otherwise... I won't have it all incorporated into my mix. And we know incorporate means mixed in. So there's the butter gone in and I'm gonna put the sugar in as well. Add the sugar into the bowl. And some of that has got stuck on the bottom. That's not a problem. There we go. So I am going to mix that together before I add in the syrup. So let's have a little look at what this looks like. So it can be quite tricky if the butter isn't softened because otherwise it stays in little clumps. So what have you all been up to this weekend? We were very blessed again with some lovely weather so I hope you managed to get your hours worth of exercise outside. I know sometimes it can be quite tricky coming back in can't it once you've been outside but we know that that's what we're having to do at the moment to keep ourselves, our families, and anyone who's working in a hospital nice and safe. So, here we are. Now you can see it's got a little bit sticky. Okay, but the golden syrup 
is going to have magic effects. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my golden syrup and I need two tablespoons, one to two tablespoons, but I'm going to use two. So I'm going to make sure, now we know when we're doing a measurement like this, it needs to be level. So there's one. Now because it's so sticky, you might need something to help it out from the little measurement. You can always use a finger, but remember, don't lick your finger whilst you're cooking, because otherwise you'll add germs into your ingredients and that's not what we want. There's one. Let me give this a squeeze. So I can add our two tablespoons of syrup in. There we go. Making sure you do the lid back up on that because that is something really sticky if it leaks. Let's add in our second tablespoon of syrup. Very, very sticky stuff, this. Now I spent my weekend in the garden and I've got a little funny <laughs> little funny instant to share with you. If you happen to see any bruises or cuts on my hands whilst I'm cooking today, it's because I was gardening at the weekend. And whilst I mix this in, I'm going to tell you what happened. So I have a very small pond in my garden and the pond was absolutely disgusting. It had gone all green. And I've got fishes in the pond, but I didn't think that they were going to be able to breathe very well because the water was so green. So I decided to clean out the pond. Now, the problem with this is that uh, I fell in. <laughs> so, yeah, so I fell in the pond. Um, it was absolutely disgusting. It was all green and gooey. And obviously, as I fell in, I bumped my arm. And that is where my bruise has come from. And my cuts have come from when I was trying to cut down all the bushes that I've got around my garden. And I scratched my fingers on some of the thorns. I've got some roses. So I scratched my fingers on the thorns. But it looks so much better now. And all the fishes, I can see them as they're swimming around the pond. So it's very exciting. And there we go. So... After my pond story, this is our mixture. This is what it looks like. Now, it does look a bit dry, but you've got to remember when you put it in the oven, all the things that are mixed in there are going to start to melt and that's what will stick it together. So I'm going to add a few of my yogurt cranberries. Now, you don't need to add anything to yours if you don't want to, but if you do decide to add some things in, now would be the time to do it. So I'm going to mix them into my ingredients, remembering again that they're probably not going to stick right now, but they will melt into the ingredients when I put it in the oven. So I have got a baking tray, and on that baking tray I have sprayed it this time, so you do need to make sure you've either greased it with some butter or that you've sprayed it with some cooking spray to make sure it doesn't stick, and then you just pour your ingredients into the baking tray. Now, depending on how thick you want your flapjacks, depends how well you spread this. So what we need to do now is we need to spread it onto the tray and you're going to press it down with the back of the spoon that you used to mix the ingredients in. So I'm gonna just press it down like this. And you want to try and help the ingredients to mix together as you're pressing it down. And there we go. So I've pressed all the ingredients down with the back of my spoon and I'm now going to put it in the oven, remembering if you're cooking at home that you need a grown up to help you with the oven because the oven is very hot. So we are going to, now I don't want any of these cranberries on the edge, sorry, that's why I'm being a bit fussy here because otherwise they're just going to melt and fall out of the flapjack. And that's going to be very frustrating. So uh, we're gonna pop it in the oven. Now it needs to go in the oven, flapjacks don't need very long. So this is going in the oven for about 10 minutes 
okay if it goes in much longer they tend to dry when it comes out the oven it's going to be quite gooey and that's completely normal what it'll do is once it comes out the oven it'll cool as it cools it'll harden and then you'll be able to cut it up into sections and have a little flapjack each okay so if you choose to do this cooking i wish you good luck have fun enjoy and i will be back in a moment with the end result and you can see what it looks like see you in a minute here we go Beepers going off, let's see what they look like. I actually haven't looked yet, so I really hope they're not burnt. As always, make sure you've got a grown-up to help you. Something warm uh, to keep their hands, <laughs> something warm, something to keep their hands not getting warm, and something to put it on when they come out and go on the surface. Let's see what they look like and turn off that frustrating sound. Oh. Et voila. They don't look like I was expecting. I thought they'd be a little darker and the chocolate would be more melted. But there we go. So they are fabulous. As always, I'm going to put them on the side and push them towards the back to make sure they stay nice and safe away from little grabbing hands. And that's where they'll stay until they've cooled down. And when they've cooled down, I will then be able to cut them up into slices and eat them. Not sure what that noise is in the background, but we'll just let it carry on. All the best of luck. I hope you have fun making them. And I will see you again with another video very, very soon. Take care, enjoy.